Okay, so this presentation is about the uh, French omnibus colonial uh, navigation and commerce shoots. And the first thing to note is that uh, it's a little confusing if you happen to have a stamp that has these two figures on it and to figure out exactly uh, where it belongs because uh, the French uh, peace and commerce issue, which is known as the sage type, was issued a couple of years earlier and it looks very much like the... Um, navigation and commerce issue, which followed the, a few years later. And the, the, the really giveaway is to look for the, the tablet in the bottom of the stamp, which has the name of the particular colony, which is good for, and then you know you've got a, a, a navigation and commerce, which is also known as the group type, which is similar, for example, to some of the uh, Victorian issues where they were all the same, except they had the denomination and the country name in the bottom. The peace and commerce issues were designed by this guy, Jules Auguste Sage, which is why it's known as the Sage type. Uh, but it was engraved by a fellow named Bouchon, which you'll see in just a moment. And if you look back in this diagram, you'll see that um, here's Mr. Sage's name, and here's, here's Mr. Bouchon's name. And to avoid going back again, I will point out that Mr. Bouchon has his name here in the or at the lower right. Okay, and uh, the navigation of the commerce were designed by Louis-Eugène Mouchon, and who also designed the, the Rights of Man, the 1902 issue for France and stands for various other countries. And as I said, his name appears on the oars in that stand. And there were no less than either 27 or 29, depending on how you count countries that use this issue. Uh, the reason I have two numbers there is that two countries issued, used this issue, but they use it with a different country name in the country. So you have Gulf of Benin, which was the first one, and then Benin itself issued the, the exact same set of stamps. This is the one, one of the few cases where uh, a country has the exact same set of stamps uh, as another country, although obviously they weren't really different countries. They were just different mm -hmm. names of the country and the, and the area for the country name. And I've got some notes here. This you'll notice that the parentheses, that means that uh, that's what appears on the actual stamps as opposed to uh, what Scott has as the country name. So, uh, you have, for example, you have Dahomey that's listed that way, but it says and dependencies on the actual stamps. Uh, in some cases, it's the reverse. The square brackets indicate that this is a part of the name uh, that Scott knows the country by, but that name did not appear on the stamps as such. So French Congo and French Sudan, actually said French Congo and French Sudan on the stamps, but Guyana and Guinea didn't say French in them at all. And then you have things like uh, India and uh, Oceania, which were the, the establishments in India or the establishments in Oceania. At the other end here, uh, I've listed Madagascar, because it's wonderfully complicated. It did have a lot of dependencies, and they changed over time. So you had Diego Suarez, which is a town uh, on in Madagascar that issued its own stamps. And at first it was Diego Suarez and dependencies. I don't really know what the dependencies are, as it was just a, a town on the coast. And then, then they dropped the dependencies uh, and reissued the set. Uh, Nase Bay and St. Marie de Madagascar are, are tiny islands off the coast of Madagascar. And they were folded into Madagascar and you had Madagascar stamps in 1896. And then I believe in 1908, although Scott only uh, mentions this from Mahaley, uh, the islands, the Comoro, what are now known as the Comoro Islands, were also uh, moved into Madagascar and stopped using their own stamps. But prior to that, Grand Comoro, uh, Anjouan, Mayotte, and Mohali, which are the four main islands of the Comoro Islands, uh, had their own stamps. So by 1908, though, when they actually stopped issuing these these new new varieties of this issue, um, all of those had disappeared, and it was all done through Madagascar. This is my spreadsheet. Uh, this shows all of, all 30 of the countries. Uh, you can't see it, but you can get some idea of it. Um, this here. These these values here were the first issue, which was issued in 1892. And all of these countries here 
had uh, stamps from that issue in 1892. Then in 1893 and on, you had a bunch of other countries that joined this particular issue. And then in the, the 20th century, when they were really issuing the new issues, uh, uh, these four countries finally joined, and that completes the set. And you can't see the color here. Um, the spreadsheet really has colors showing that a lot of these values had uh, variations in them. Uh, not not uh, minor numbers, Scott, but actual uh, reports of different different uh, major numbers for them. And they, they have variety. So we were going to get into quite a bit of discussion of how the varieties work out. So I did a lot of a lot of studying about um, what these were because you, you you collect these and you see that oh boy there's a whole lot of countries that use these stamps and you think well are they are they all use the same set of stamps and it turns out no they don't and there's all sorts of interesting facts about uh, about these sets. So Scott in the introduction lists uh, 58 French colonies. Actually they they missed uh, they list uh, I believe more than that. But they're not correct. The list is not correct. If you want to distinguish between offices in a country, French offices in Syria or something like that, is the distinction because that stamp will be printed in piastre or something, uh, the, the denomination will be piastre rather than francs? Because the ones that were the French establishments in India, which are listed here, use these stamps, were actual colonies of France. The French military occupied them, and they were they were territories of France. Whereas the offices were in uh, towns that somebody else or the India itself, for example, where still owned those towns. They were they were just oh. they, the French established a post office for the the benefit of their people living there. The, as you saw on the list before, um, there were two Benin and two Diego Suarez listings here. And I count them as one each, as 58 French colonies. And Scott lists Alsace and Lorraine as a French colony, which is, it really wasn't. They also list uh, the Somali coast, which is where they list the stamps, as Djibouti. So they have a double listing for, for that location. And they don't list the uh, the country that they list actually list as French colonies, which were was the stamps that were used before this big uh, uh, omnibus issue was 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 issued. They don't list that as a French colony. So Scott was a little odd about that. I sent sent it into the the lady who actually edits the catalog. I'll see if they uh, correct their listing and in introduction on future issues or not. Now, of the 58 French colonies, which French actually had, um, five of them issued stamps during the period when the, the, the navigation and commerce set was in use. But they didn't, they didn't issue stamps of that set for them. And the, the, moment, the thing to note here is that this was mostly, mostly North Africa. So, for example, Algeria never used this set. But again, Algeria didn't issue stamps at all until 1924 because the French considered Algeria simply a part of France. There were, I think, believe three departments of France uh, made up Algeria. And also, French Morocco and Tunisia did not issue this series at all. Mauritania, you could almost, it's a southern neighbor of, uh, uh, of, of Morocco. That country did not issue stamps until the very end of the Navigation and Commerce series. And uh, it did not issue any of those particular stamps. Uh, Middle Congo, very similar. Tahiti is rather strange. Um, they did have some of these stamps uh, labeled French Oceana, overprinted Tahiti. Um, they issued three stamps like that. And they did issue stamps before French Oceana had the stamps. And they continued issuing, issuing after um, this particular issue until 1915. So Tahiti is a rather odd, odd case. Uh, virtually all of the countries that issued these stamps were either small islands or were in Africa. There are only three exceptions to that rule. Uh, French Guiana in South America, French India, and Indochina in Asia. So these were almost all uh, issued for what amounted to small countries that uh, were, didn't have a lot of mail going through them. There were 17 values between one cent and five francs. 
but there are 34 varieties listed there. And the varieties, again, I don't mean minor numbers, I mean actual major numbers that were uh, listed as different stamps or, or were, were described differently. Of the color varieties, eight of them were minor paper or paper color differences. And as we will see later, uh, perhaps some of these differences were really a matter of the perception of whoever cataloged the paper stamps, not, not really differences. Um, real color varieties, not, not paper color varieties. There were, there were five are debatable and they're debatable for the same reason I just, I just mentioned. Um, the first issues were in 1892 and the latest were in 1908. This is not counting the various overprints which we'll discuss in a moment. Counting overprints, the series was used until 1912. Those of you familiar with these countries will know that uh, a lot of the values were overprinted in five cent and 10 cent overprints. Uh, and they differ by the spacing between the lines of the overprint. So you have two, two series for most of the countries. Okay. Well, the exception to this is Madagascar, which had some five franc stamps, I guess, left over. And in 1921, they surcharged them. And that was the very last appearance of these particular stamps. And here's an interesting one that people who want to collect complete countries. Uh, St. Marie de Madagascar and Senegami and Niger's only stamps with a non overprinted stamps the set. So if you get a bunch of uh, those stamps from the Swiss countries, you've got the entire country. The 10 cents is the most uh, various. It has five different varieties. These are different colors. Uh, the main report is of red, but there's also carmine, rose, rose red, and I forget what the fifth one is. Both the 15 and 50 cent have four varieties. The one cent has three varieties. The 5, 25, 30, 75, and 5 franc each have two varieties, and the rest of them have no varieties. They're all, they're a single color and color of paper. Every country has all of the denominations except the 30, 35, 45, 75, 2 franc, and 5 franc, which were only for certain of the countries. So we'll discuss that in a little more detail shortly. Uh, from one of the articles that I found in the digital library at the APS, I got some information on about the rates. Overseas was 25 cents. French community started at 25 cents and went down to 15 and then went down to 10 cents. I was, I was looking at this because I, I, I was wondering what use did these various denominations have? They had a whole lot of denominations. I have no idea really what they used the one, two, and four cent stamps for because there was no rate that, that corresponded to that. And most of the other rates were multiples of these larger denominations, but they issued all these uh, low value stamps. Um, military correspondence went in, went for 15 cents. The local rate was 15 cents. Printed matter, as in most countries, was lower. It was a nickel. Uh, registry cost 25 cents. And then they had what they called levels. And apparently these were multiples of the basic rate for heavier, heavier pieces. Here's one set that I have. Um, this is uh, Comoro Islands. And you can see that 1897 was their first set, the same set basically as 1892, but they, they waited five years before they issued it. Uh, 1900, many of the countries um, changed uh, the values to these, uh, these ones you see here. Can you spot the error? There is an error here. I'll give you a hint. It's not in the stamps themselves. It's Grand Comoro Islands. Grand Comoro is a single island. It's not a set of islands. Therefore, the S should not be at the end of the uh, title of this page. <laughs> uh, these are the two later values of uh, the second set, 35 and the 45, which not every country has. And the Grand Comoro never got the high value, the two franc or the five franc stamps. So here they are for uh, Moheli, which is a neighboring island, which is actually smaller than Grand Comoro Island. But for some reason, they got the high values in their stamps. Interesting fact about Moheli. Um, after uh, independence, when the Comoro Islands broke away from control by Madagascar, um, Moheli declined to join the Comoro Island uh, country. So Moheli is like reunion. It's an integral part of France. Now, what are the patterns? How did the different countries have these uh, stamps? Almost all of the countries 
have a different list of stamps from this series. There are very few in which two countries have the exact same uh, set of stamps. Not surprisingly, you know, the Gulf of Benin and Benin, uh, which issued their stamps one year apart, they were the identical set of stamps. Uh, same is true of Dago Suarez and dependencies and regular Dago Suarez. Uh, but French Congo and Ivory Coast, in the same year, issued the same set of stamps for this. And French Guinea and French Sudan, again, in the first issue, the same set of stamps. Other than that, every country has a completely different list of what particular uh, varieties of the stamp they had. Every country has 12 following values, but not necessarily in the same color. The countries that started issuing these stamps in the 20th century uh, often had this, the, the particular colors of the second set rather than the first set. But the, most of these stamps that you see here are from the first set, and every country that had them had that particular set of colors. Every country except Mohali, again, has a 15 cent stamp. For some reason, they never issued a 15 cent stamp for Mohali. And these values, the 35 cent, 45 cents, the two franc, and the five franc, are relatively scarce. Remember, there were 29 countries or 27 countries, if you count the actual way Scott lists them. And these were only present in a variety of, uh, minority of the countries. And I didn't, didn't find enough information to know why they would have issued these 35 and 45 cent stamps. Okay, so here's the first issue, there's 13 values. Um, you'll notice, for example, the black, it's on lilac blue paper, blue paper, or bluish paper. And the um, 75 cent, is described this color as being violet or deep violet. So we will discuss these variations shortly. But this is the first issue. Mm -hmm. Most countries that uh, had the stamps at this period of time had all of these issues, but not 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 so uh, universally. So 18 out of the 29 countries started this series in 1892. So they they decided they were going to replace the French colonies. Uh, issues with issues for each each colony itself. And they issued a whole lot of stamps in 1892. And then you have this listing of the Gulf of Benin started in 93. Uh, these four countries started in 94, and so on, and so on, and so on. The second issue started in, in 1899. Actually, this is wrong. Uh, 1899, uh, Mar Martinique uh, sort of preempted everybody else and issued some stamps in 1899. But most countries uh, issued these second issue in 1900. But even the countries that started issuing these stamps after 1900 still use some of the values from the first set. So the first set continued on uh, throughout. Okay, and this this is odd. This odd guy Mohali, he was the last last country to start issuing his stamps only in 1906 through 1908. Color specifications change, as I've mentioned this before. So most of the countries that use the one cent stamp uh, is listed in Scott as being black on lilac blue. There's also a black on bluish. The Benin stamps are listed as being black on bluish. And then there's also black on blue. And there are these um, four countries that whose stamps for the one cent are listed as black on blue. And I pulled out all of my... Uh, uh, pages with these stamps on them, look carefully at them. And I didn't see these color differences on the, the color of the paper at all. It, the actually paper to me looks gray rather than blue, bluish, or lilac blue. And uh, it was, I didn't think the, the paper was anywhere near blue and shade anywhere. So I find this uh, paper variety here for the one set to be uh, something that's uh, imaginary, really. And the deep violet on orange or deep violet, uh, it seemed to me that the color of the paper varied more than the color of the inks. And uh, and the color sometimes said to be deep violet, or more often than not, is, is light seems to be lighter violet than some of the regular violet ones. So again, this, this doesn't strike me as a, as a correct a variation. It complicates things. And I should note that where, where you had a particular country said one cent uh, black on blue, that 
none of those countries have the other varieties listed as as minor numbers. They were either one or the other. <clears throat> now the second issue, again, mostly 1900, but Martinique in 1899 started it, and some of the others were issued somewhat later. Are these particular varieties? And again, the ten cent red rose carmine, uh, rose red, uh, fifteen cents gray or gray on light gray, and uh, the five franc is. But this is both red lilac and lilac on lavender. And the 50 cent brown is, is unique in that Gabon is the only country that issued this particular uh, variety of uh, stamp. 10 cents rose red, 1900 New Caledonia only is listed as that. Uh, but 10 cents rose, 1904 Gabon. And the 10 cents carmine, 1906 Mohali. All of the rest of them are listed simply as red. And I looked through these and I completely disagree with uh, labeling these things, these particular colors, or, or listing the rest as simply as red. They're, they're, they're all some variety of shades, but some cases where the stamp was said to be red, I said, no, that's that color is rose, it's not red. So I don't agree with the, this particular arrangement. The gray on light gray, this is really the worst. Um, there, there are clearly many of these where the color paper, as reported by Scott, is the wrong color. It's not right. And in the Scott albums, which is what my album is based on, the earlier alphabet has gray on light gray. And the countries that are lower down in the alphabet are simply described as gray and not mentioning the paper color at all. And um, in the catalog, the current descriptions of these stamps are different than in the original Scott albums. So something went strange, strange on this particular issue. I don't know why. So I'm not happy with all any of the variations that Scott listed here. I don't think they should be listed as such, but um, that's what we have. So there's some general notes that I got from the uh, the article I read. These were uh, abused by speculators, this particular issue. So there were a lot who were you know, bought by stamp dealers and what so on. And that uh, there are forgeries of these stamps. So most of this came from the uh, just going through the catalog and studying carefully all of the listings. Amazingly, Wikipedia has articles on both of these sets. Uh, the navigation and commerce issue is is listed as that the peace and commerce issue is listed as type sage but they're very short articles they're not they're not very informative the american uh, uh, the research public library lists 63 articles in its digital library the only one i found of use was this collector's club philatelist from 2001 that had good information uh, mostly that's where i got my information on the rates and the philatelic union catalog uh, has no entry for navigation. If you're looking for that particular topic, uh, it, it's not listed that way. So that's uh, that's basically it.